roll, Discovery. Through the apocalypse. I'm Ben, as always, I'm joined by Mike. Hello. And Claire. Hey. And today we're talking about feral children. Ones that get left in the woods, raised by animals. You know. There's been a few, and not there? Yeah. Terrible fucking parenting. Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the worst parenting, apart from killing them, leaving them alone in the woods or whatever, to fend for themselves, is going to be next, on it? Yeah, you got you got pretty lucky to get get past a year, haven't you? Depends how old you are. Exactly. If you if you're a baby, you've no chance of you. Mm-mm. If you're a toddler, and you're taken mean, in by a pack of wolves, but you, you bite, suck on the, the suck wolves' the, nipple, nipple. Suckle at the wolves' teat. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that how Rome got built? Something to do with Rome. Yeah, it was Romulus and Remus being mm. raised by a she-wolf and suckling at her teeth. They were feral kids, technically. There you go. And look what they were done to accomplish. <laughs> Family the city. An empire? Well, they didn't have the empire right then. No, but eventually. Not eventually. They got the city. Yep. So, yeah. yeah just, Doesn't but, it hold you back nowadays? <laughs> it shouldn't have. Oh, some of these fuckers are lazy bastards <laughs> when they come back into society. Oh, they, should, they should teach you about Romulus and Remus. So look, like, put your mind to it, kids. Look what you can do. No. The next bear grills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then let's um, thank some new and returning listeners. Then we'll do some weird news, and then we'll get on to the main cut and thrust of today's topic. Where shall I start? Niles, Michigan. Camberwell in the United Kingdom. Mysore in India. Mandeville, L.A., Los Angeles, United States. Louisiana. Is it? L.A. is a city. Oh yeah. Well, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels in Belgium. I- I'm going to read this next one wrong because it looks funnier. Electric Al. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eclectic in Alabama. Sydney, Australia. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. San Francisco, California. Arono in M.E. Where's M.E.? Maine. Maine. Why is there an M.A.? Or an M.I.A.? Because M.A. is Massachusetts. Oh, the only one I know. <laughs> <laughs> Balakapapan in Indonesia. Toronto, Canada. Havelock County, Ohio, Kirkcaldy, Buckeye, Arizona, Portugalville, Missouri, London, United Kingdom, Guadalajara, Spain, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Shady Nasty, New York top. Hey. Thanks for listening. It's much appreciated. Yeah, yeah man. Thanks. All right, let's do some weird news. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Drinkers terrorised by sex-mad ghosts at haunted 300-year-old British pub. Sounds all right to me. <laughs> um, the Drovers Inn, north of Loch Lomond, is a very scary place at night. Ooh. Malevolent and frisky ghosts have been terrorising visitors to a 300-year-old Lockside pub in Scotland, staff claim. Self-opening doors, sinister laughter, mysterious bruises... Moving objects, orbs, and unexplained sexual bumping Ooh. in the night. <laughs> All plagued those brave enough to stay in the Drovers Inn at the northern tip of Loch Lomond. I think we should go on a field trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want some ghost sex. <laughs> <laughs> and the testimonies of those who stayed in worked at the 18th century inn, one of the oldest pubs in Scotland, to the stuff of local legend. Uh, the premises were long used by Highland cattle market merchants who would uh, drive their cattle down to the lock. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Much of the decor and furniture remained the same, and if the tales are believed, its old inhabitants never really less uh, never really left. With ghosts in one room, guests sorry, in one room, regularly claiming to have been disturbed and even pinched in the night. Ooh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cotton pinching there? Depends ghosts. where they're pinching. I don't want to wake up and have my nipple pinched. <laughs> well, maybe I do. 
According to Yvonne McStavick, uh, the venue's social media manager, she said it's a uh, scary place at night. The ghostly bumping sounds are so loud, visitors have even mistaken them for people having sex. Oh, wow. Fantastic. I hope they don't do, like, you know, some ghost night or murder mystery night, you know. I bet they do. The atmosphere going, bringing the business. Anyway, this this pub's get, got humping ghosts. Yeah. Ghosts of Highland cattle drivers all going and having... What's the name for it? Spectrophilia? Spectrophilia. Hmm. I think we need to go on a field trip. <laughs> Let's go there. I'm down for it. I'm just going to get raped by the ghost of Jimmy Savile. <laughs> that probably, no, my luck, that's what would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear this, these chains rattling, and then now then, now then. No. no. <laughs> Don't you smell the cigar smoke? You wouldn't have to see any, would you? But... <laughs> Jim will fix it for you <laughs> and me. <laughs> Put this in your mouth. <laughs> Jingle yeah. jangle. Have you ever played a game called Balls on Chin? <laughs> yeah, well, that could happen, Mike. I mean, it's don't for Jimmy Savile's hanging around Lot Loman, but in the in his afterlife. But who can say? Do you find probably a bit too old for him now? To be fair. <laughs> well, we should put off the beard as well, isn't it? <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> this is Jimmy we're talking about. Yeah. Sir Jimmy Savile. I know that's mm. gone now, hasn't it? They're taking the sir off him. I should hope so. He's still got that award from the Vatican. <laughs> no surprises there. Yeah. Money for procuring kids. <laughs> yeah, number one nonce. <laughs> 1978. <laughs> All right, should we do the next one then? Okay, electrician is accused of surgically removing a man's testicle as part of a bizarre castration fetish fantasy. A part of it. <laughs> not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to cut your ball off, but that's not all I want to do. <laughs> Former private school boy Ryan Andrew King, 27, is accused of cutting off another man's testicle after they met online and arranged to meet up in person in a backpacker's hostel to perform God. a bizarre castration fetish fantasy. Why do all these things always happen in backpacker hostels? <laughs> yeah, have you seen the film Hostel, is it? Well, that, no, but I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it, but... Yeah. Aware. If it's anything like that, it's not good. <laughs> well, it's in Australia too. I mean, that place yeah. is you know, notoriously rough. Well, certainly in the middle. I mean, Mad Max 2 was literally a documentary. <laughs> King allegedly researched the surgery online and bought medical equipment and anaesthetic with him before removing one of the man's testicles at his request. It's alleged the wound could not be stitched up enough to stop the bleeding and an ambulance was called. The other man was rushed to hospital and required surgery. King has been behind bars since his arrest in July where he was charged with two counts of acts intending to maim, disfigure or disable. Well, he didn't do a very good job of researching then, did he? <laughs> no. I mean, for fuck's like, sake. Right, your testicles off. Ah, that's it, we're done. Oh, shit. You want to stop bleeding? <laughs> I didn't read that far. <laughs> so you've got the anaesthetic, but no stitching, you know. Couldn't he just fucking cauterised it at a push? Well, if he wanted to stop it bleeding, you know, just saying, you know, it's... Let's just hope you had general anaesthetic as opposed to a local anaesthetic. Mm. Then again, it could be just local, and that's how he's getting, this guy's getting his jollies. I suppose so, yeah. I mean, castration fetish is like getting aroused by having your nuts or your dick cut off, which for me is completely counterproductive because <laughs> I kind of need them to become aroused in the first place. It's a bit of a one time thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's it. It's, like, it's all very well and good saying, yeah, I want you to cut my dick off in front of me, but I haven't thought this through at that point. I can't jack off again. I can't jack off about this because I don't have a penis anymore. Yeah. Yeah, you're a bit of a catch-22, aren't you? Yeah. You, so want, you want it cut off to come, but if you have it cut off, you can't come. That's it. So, did they not think this through? <laughs> Just Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's so amazing. I want to ejaculate. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> mm. Waving a cock in their hand. Mm. <laughs> my now. <laughs> oh, man. It's just, just, and he's a, he's a private school boy. They do all sorts of things when they're boarding. <laughs> yeah. 
Not for me, thank you. I'm not into not into the castration fetish. No. It's not for me. I'll try most things, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, so uh, there was a water stain shaped like the Virgin Mary found in a car park said to, uh, to protect people from COVID-19. I see it, Ben has some beers, his phone's gone off. <laughs> I thought it was on silent. So the godly Rookie stain... mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the godly stain was discovered in a car park of a bakery in... Bogota. Bogota, Colombia, and has since become a place of worship with devotees praying for protection from coronavirus. Well, I hope they're all keeping their social distancing while they're fucking going around this water stain, although I can see the resemblance. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can get, if I look hard enough, I can kind of see a face and an arm sticking out. Yeah, I really? can see it, yeah. yeah. You cannot see it. There's the eye, the nose, the yeah. mouth, the head, the Shawl. neck. The breasts. What looks like... Well, I don't know. That looks a bit <laughs> scully to me there. I think that might actually that might be... might be a tumour. <laughs> no, it's that fucking... <laughs> it's that dude from Total Recall. Uh, the beer belly mutant. Yeah. It looks like a primary... She doesn't like she's carrying a face hugger. Mm. <laughs> it looks like a primary school volcano experiment. <laughs> chopped up the wall. <laughs> That's what it no, I can see a face, but it's <laughs> paradolia. No, Mike, it's the Virgin Mary. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, right, so devout Christians are flocking to this bakery and praying to the water stain shaped like the Virgin Mary. Why is it in a car park? Well, it's just had some water dribble down the wall, hasn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's a bakery. I think it's just a sort of natural occurrence. Is it, is it, the baker's got a car park. Right, so 50 to 60 people are <laughs> come in to pray um, on this car park. Before buying something in the bakery. <laughs> so it's good for business, isn't it? Well, there we go, isn't it? I mean, you could just say, look, that's just a, a fucking pissy stain of a wall. Or you can say it's the Virgin Mary and then you can get 50 to 60 customers every day extra. Are you suggesting a man <laughs> would use religious, pa- religious imagery for his own profit, Mike? I know, it's horrific, isn't it? I suppose the Pope has got that golden throne. Mm. In a snakehead throne room. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from the bakery says it, it cannot be from a leak and rejects the claim that the walls are damaged and adding, um, added that it's a miraculous image. Yeah, of course you would. I reckon it's like the local hobo's piss. <laughs> He's, that's where he pisses. He pisses there. He's pissed there every day yeah. for like ten years. It's just a damp patch. <laughs> I think it's the Virgin Mary. You think it's a bubba, it looks like a dick. <laughs> uh, you know? It's well, like a Grim right. Reaper just sort of peering over her. Ooh, that's dark. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Mm. Or she cradles the infant face hugger. <laughs> <laughs> you got all your bases covered. <laughs> you really have got a squint to see it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. To see it like the Virgin Mary. <laughs> well, the, the, the acid test for this is has anyone who's been to see it got COVID? Well, apparently the bakery workers haven't. Well, there you go. The power of Christ compels you, bitch. Yeah, but now they're getting 50 to 60 extra people in their store. They're probably going to get it soon. <laughs> well, no, because they're praying to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. And they'd be socially distanced, of course. I hope they're socially distanced while they're praying. I really do. Well, whatever gives them hope. That's it. But I think it's a false hope. That's fucking bollocks, mate. It's a fucking water stain. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is literally just a water stain. That, that's it. It's uh, Someone's just been pissing there for the last ten years. Yeah. I mean, that is definitely a skeleton. In the middle. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> I think that's weird news. Yeah. Shall we move on to some wild children? Feral children? Yeah. Okay, there should we start with John of Liège. French. Belgian, I imagine. Belgian. Uh, one of the earliest English language accounts of a feral child concerns John of Liège, a boy who supposedly spent most of his youth in isolation in the Belgian wilderness. According to a 1644 account by Sir Kenholm Digby, John first fled to the woods at the age of five to escape enemy soldiers during a religious war. Well, that would cause you to flee your home. Yeah. But while his family and the rest of his village returned to their homes after the danger had passed, young John was too terrified to come out of hiding. 
He struck off alone in the depths of the forest where he survived for 16 years on roots and wild berries. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Where the shits every day. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like burning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the berries, John. Uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, poor kid, though. For 16 years, from the age of five. Living in the woods. Yeah. Very little protein. Terrified to go back into society because you think you're going to get killed. It's got to do a lot to damage to your mental health as well, hasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going to be good for you, is it? Especially uh, when you start taking on wolf qualities. <laughs> That's ace. He returned to society at the age of 21 when he was caught trying to steal food from a local farm. But then he was reportedly naked and all overgrown with hair and had quite forgotten the use of all language. Most astonishing of all, his years in the bush had led him to develop a dog-like sense of smell, allowing him to sniff out food from great distances. Well, that's bollocks. According to Is there Dibby, a way that his genes fucking... He managed to get dog-like smell. His smell might have been more enhanced than a normal human because he uses it, he's trained it more, mm-hmm. but to say that it's dog-like, that's bollocks. I'm going for where, <laughs> I'm going for where, John? Um, according to Dibby John, eventually began talking again, but his heightened senses dulled once he was back in civilization. Makes sense. So he's yeah. lost his edge. Yeah. You know, he had that survival edge, didn't he? I mean, he was like spearing wolves and shit. I imagine wolves and bears back then. Mm-hmm. Well, they said that, you know, people who, who are blind, they can hear, like, loads yeah. better. Can't Daredevil. They? Yeah. He's pretty handy. As a blind person, it's actually learned how to use sonar like bats yeah yeah he makes clicking sounds and he can tell from the click I guess from the rebounding of the sound back at him how far that object is away from him I bet he's a fucking fun guy to be around isn't he always fucking clicking at everything he's in his mouth he's like that oh clicking. god that'd be it, fucking annoying you see him riding he's totally blind riding his bike around town that's not good <laughs> don't let him do that but he can navigate <laughs> he can't see so he never gets. I don't care if he's fucking. I don't care if he's Come fucking. That clicking guy again. <laughs> I don't care if he's fucking bat think, mate. I don't care if he's busting out whale noises like sonar. He shouldn't be riding anything. He's, he's fucking blind. Give him a chance. No! I've seen dogs drive cars as well. <laughs> well, that's perfectly sensible. Dogs would never deliberately run anyone down. <laughs> <laughs> the blind guy rides just, a bike. It's in the schnauz, it's just sort of one paw on the wheel. Ooh, look Looking at the, the camera as the car drove past. It's true in New Zealand they were tra- training dogs to drive blind people. <laughs> it was a dog going on the right away. <laughs> you're not, you're fucking taking the piss now. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> Well, that's not only like you know, fucking traffic lights, is it? Dogs are colour blind. They just keep going through red lights, it'll be chaos. <laughs> maybe it wasn't blind people <laughs> driving it. Maybe, maybe it was disabled, but Maybe something. they weren't driving at all because they can't see the traffic lights. <laughs> they were driving. <laughs> but they can't see zebra crossings. Uh, How do you explain to a dog what a zebra crossing is? All I'm saying is a sitting trip dog driver car. There have been somebody on the floor doing the pedals, surely. I don't know, I forget now. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, Claire's French Bulldog's not going to stand up and drive, is she? You have to get her a booster seat. Yeah, it's got adjusted pedals and things. <laughs> uh. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> Are you calling bollocks on, on John of yeah. on, on John of Liege? No, I'm not calling bollocks, but that he's like got, he's, he's got a dog-like sense I of smell. I call bollocks on that. Yeah. I think he's just learned to use it better. Yeah. And he's and let's face it, this is 1644 Belgium. I I'd imagine pretty much everywhere just stunk of shit. <laughs> You know, people are throwing their shit in the street at this point still. Cows are being marched in the town and they're shitting everywhere. Horses. Horses. Rats everywhere. I mean, you know, he probably, you know, the fact that he lost his sense of smell just means he got used to smelling like shit every day. (laughs) Could be. 
you know? So, I think everyone else's sense of smell was so blinded, his was fucking amazing in comparison. And then they civilised him and made him smell shit all the time. Maybe <laughs> eat it, who knows? After all, they looked after him. And it took a while says, to learn English again, though, wasn't it? Or Belgium well, again, or any language, wasn't it? Also says there became a famous um, scam porn star. I don't know, would it? <laughs> <laughs> you what? <are? laughs> it also says there became a famous scat porn star. <laughs> What was his name again? John of Liege. Uh, well, you know, just throw it out. Maybe. Peter the Wild Boy. He looks a deal, little fucker, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. In the summer of 1725, a naked and mute adolescent boy was found living in the woods, alone in the woods of northern Germany. The child was brought before the British King George I, who took a liking to him and soon had, and had him sh- shipped to his court. Yeah. <laughs> Mute kids tell no tales. Yeah. Should we teach him sign language? Nah. <laughs> I bet he passed him about between him and the Archbishop. Oof. Uh, he was christened Peter. The boy soon became the toast of London and he was regularly trotted out as a party favour to entertain royal guests. <laughs> How entertaining! Oh. Oh, fuck me, he's played the mute kid again. It's <laughs> third time in a row now. He's still got the mute kid, kid. <laughs> fucking hell. <man. laughs> oh, every fucking time around at George's. Let's get the mute, you can tell he's pissed, he's got the mute kid out. <laughs> and nobles were fascinated by the wild boy's habit of scurrying about on all fours, and they laughed at his disregard for table manners and his pension for picking pockets and trying to kiss ladies oh, yeah, of the court. He's trying to rape the ladies of the court. <laughs> kiss ladies of the court. He couldn't rape anyone in a court back then. They had like 15 layers of petticoats on. <laughs> I said try and I didn't say it succeeded. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, fair enough. It just sounds like Donald Trump. <laughs> picking pockets, being a cutthroat businessman, touching ladies they don't want to, you know... <laughs> Only I wish he was a fucking mute. <laughs> Attempts to civilise Peter failed. He never learned to speak and preferred to sleep on the floor. So he was eventually sent to the oh, countryside. You know, it's a bit hard, isn't it? <laughs> all he does is sleep and fucking try and rape all the women in the court. I just get rid of him. <laughs> sent him to the country. <laughs> I've got a stable he can live in. On the... He was sent to the countryside. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that mean they just take him round back and shoot him with a musket? <laughs> Feed him to the pigs. <laughs> and where he lived until his death in 1785. By then, Peter inspired comment and speculation from the likes of Daniel Defoe and Jonathan Swift, uh, who were obviously famous actors. Uh, not actors. <laughs> William Defoe was a famous actor. Daniel Defoe is an author. Yeah, um, and Jonathan Swift. Yeah. He wrote Gulliver's Travels. All oh, right, just Defoe Treasure Island, I think it is. And uh, so, but the full story of where he came to live in the woods has never been revealed. Uh, some researchers have since argued he may have been first abandoned because he suffered from Pitt Hopkins syndrome, a rare neurological disorder characterised by learning difficulties and an inability to develop speech. It's like, oh god, we've got a feral kid, I just throw him in the woods. Oh, fuck me. Aww. Poor thing. Poor thing, poor kid. He's not a thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's Bigfoot. He's not some kind of beast. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Look at hell, Mike, your prejudice is in full force tonight. <laughs> this is a Freudian slip. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, Marie Angelique Memi Leblanc. That's a fucking name and a half, isn't it? Mm. Something the White. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. know that. Yeah. In 1731, the French village of Songy was stunned by sightings of a wild young woman armed with a wooden club. This savage girl of Champagne was clad in uh, animal skins and a tattered dress and appeared to be from anywhere from 10 to 18 years old, depending on the source. I tell you're a politician now, the way you pronounce champagne. <laughs> <laughs> champagne, it's champagne. French. Yeah. It's French. It's a champagne, part so of France. A re- it's a region, yeah. Yeah. You'd be quaffing that with your mates, wouldn't you, all those peasant stars? <laughs> so the woman you made herself clothes and the two guys is just like, they're knocking around naked and she's at least got some animal skins. One's been eating, like, what, berries and she's uh, she's she's having a feast, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. She's wild. <laughs> yeah, she even, Good killed, on her. she even killed a local guard dog with her club. 
Yeah, that's, that's obviously not so good because I, I prefer the dog was okay. Well, she just wanted it as a hat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, God, no, my visions were doing that Mr. Burns dance and see my vest. See my vest. Mm. <laughs> uh, when villagers finally lured the young woman out of the trees, they were amazed to discover that she, only, she spoke only in animalistic whoops and squeaks, preferred to eat raw meat, often skinning and biting into the carcass of a fresh kill on the spot. Okay. In time, the girl learned to speak French and grew more civilised, and she was baptised under the name Marie Angelique Marie Leblanc and sent to live in a convent or fucking hell. Well, there's not much you could do back then. Well, why couldn't they just. Do you want to go in the convent or do you want to marry this bloke here? It's, it's either the convent or the mental institution, I'm afraid. Oh, right. She can't speak. She, well, she, no, she, she, can't. she learned to speak French and grew more civilised. Oh, okay, yeah, true. <laughs> I miss that bit. <laughs> <laughs> she obviously had nowhere to go, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Further details about her background would not emerge until 1765 when she told an interviewer that she'd escaped to the forest after being kidnapped and brought to Europe as a slave. Many of Memmi's contemporaries believed that she was originally an Eskimo, but recent research suggests she was most likely a Mes- Meskawaki Indian born in what is now Wisconsin. Oh. Which is nice. Well, not if you her. Well, no, because she was obviously stolen. Well, or her kidnapped. mother was. Yeah, from her lands. Mm. And dumped in France. Well, yeah, that bit of the story sucks. But, you know, she found Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope she had a good life in the convent. I can't imagine it. Well, was... she could have ran away. Like, you know, if she still wanted to go and live in the woods, she could have ran, ran back, couldn't she? She could have. Yeah. yeah. But she chose not to. Yeah. Because they kept her locked in a room (laughs) with a picture of Jesus on the wall. (laughs) That was it. Victor of Avellon. The mysterious story of Victor began in 1800 when a boy around 12 years old was found wandering in the woods near Avellon, France. A lot of these are in France. Mm. (laughs) Just, you know, maybe the French aren't the best parents in the world or certainly not in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. The wild child was naked and mute and had an, abund- had an abundance of scars that seemed to indicate he'd been exposed to the elements since a very young age. He refused to be washed or touched, ignored human contact and often exploded in violent outbursts. Years of isolation had also led him to develop a remarkable form of selective hearing. The boy might ignore the sound of a pistol fired behind his head but would immediately perk up when the crackling of a walnut... One of his favourite foods. Oh, that's odd. <laughs> it's like, uh, bang! Just does nothing. And then someone cracks a walnut, he's fucking, whoa! <laughs> like, a, like a dog, you know, it's meant to be looking after the house. Someone knocks a door, it does nothing. You open a cheese packet, the yeah. fuck it's there. <laughs> so he's probably been living off nuts and that, so that... Like cracking sounds like, oh, I know what that is. Just like, mm. you know, like the dog and the pistol. Yeah, bucket. maybe he's never heard the pistol sound before, but... Or maybe... Surely you'd be startled by it a little bit. That's though. what I mean, well, you yeah. think so. All of a sudden this man's got a boomstick next to my head. Or, or maybe he has heard it. There's a lot of wars back then. The Napoleonic Wars, isn't there? 1800, uh, yeah, the Napoleonic War would have been... Uh, well, it would have been just fit coming to a close. No, it wouldn't. It would have been in campaigning in Spain, yeah. Yeah, 1805, the Peninsula War ended, I think. No, it wasn't. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> 1815 was Waterloo, so... Well, there's always wars and shit going on. Yeah. Maybe he was accustomed to it. Who knows? French officials deemed the child an imbecile, but a consultant to the school for the deaf named him Jean-Marc Gaspard. A child believed it was possible to teach him language. He worked hard with a boy who he named Victor for several years and eventually got him to bathe, wear clothes and even show signs of empathy. Well, I don't think anyone's got the right to make him fucking bathe or wear clothes, personally. Why? Well, fucking, if he wants to run wild and free, what's it matter? So he's lived his life. Well, I know, but you can't do that, can you? you he's scaring all the ladies in the town. <laughs> I mean... He's only going to be locked women, up in a shed that, anyway. No, would you? You wouldn't just say, you know, oh, we found this kid in the woods, you know, and we'd be like, well... Haven't you, like, bathed him and shit? No, I let him just wander around his own shit. He's all right. He's happy. Look at him. (laughs) Oh, he's just killed another cat. (laughs) Well, it's easy not to kill cats, obviously. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be a fucking serial killer. Well, someone would take him in, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, he never learned to talk, though. Hmm. He taught Victor to understand basic spoken questions and commands. The founding died at the age of 40, never having uttered a complete sentence. Is it a case of... He was just sort of something so traumatised. He was utterly traumatised. Could be. It could be that by 12, if you haven't learnt it, or you haven't been exposed to it, mm -hmm. it's, you're too late for you, perhaps. I don't know. I have no idea. Because I know that Chomsky did discover that we are sort of genetically wired for language, but we need it to be triggered, don't we? Mm. It's like cats, they're wired to be domestic, Mm -hmm. But there's a certain period between their life, like the first two or three weeks or something like that, if they haven't got human contact, then they be, they revert to their feral yeah. genes so they can survive without human. So that's why cats are sort of semi-domestic and not fully. Fully, yeah. Oh. Treacherous bastards. <laughs> Turn on you in a second. You know if you would have had no, a heart he's, attack? No, he's a pet now. He's, you know if you were to have an heart attack, he'd eat you? Of course he would. Your dog would. <laughs> yeah, but he would, actually. <laughs> It's nature, isn't it? If you start and it was meat. Well, yeah. yeah, if I found you dead, I'd probably eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'd put cuts on you, you know, and not just... I'd say a lot on me. We have to store it for months, mate, get you for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> could sell your dick to one of these castration fish Whatever, guys. mate, I'm dead, I don't care. It's just, just throw me in the trash. It's just a rotting corpse at this point. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> Casper Hauser. On May the 26th, 1928, a teenage, 1828. 1828, a teenage boy appeared in Nuremberg, Germany with a seemingly unbelievable story. Identifying himself as Caspar Hauser, the youth said he had spent the previous 13 years confined to a small room. His only companions, a few wooden toys and a mysterious man that appeared each day to bring him food and water. He had carried with him two cryptic notes which claimed he had come into his captor's care as a child and had never been allowed to leave the house but was now being released to pursue a military <laughs> career. Uh, <laughs> Is that who you want in, yeah. in your military? Some bloke who's never left a room. Yeah. You've got to teach everything <laughs> fucking to. That's who you want. What, what was the man? This? Eh? Isn't there a film about this? Where a guy sort of brought up in a, in a barn and that, and then they just go and leave him in the middle of a, a town. Isn't that? No, I haven't seen it, no. no. I can't remember what the name is, but... It's, mm. you know, did you pursue a military career? <laughs> Apparently, um, Right, imagine that the captain's like, right, I've got this kid, I want him to be the best general in the world. I know, I lock him in a room on his own, just give him, bring him food and water every now and again, and then as soon as he comes of age, I'll send him to military school, military academy, whatever it is. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And you take some cryptic <laughs> notes with you. <laughs> Don't just write a clear explanation of what you've been planning. <laughs> just... Just write something really cryptic. His macabre tale quickly catapulted into instant fame across Europe. Many marvelled at the foundling's peculiarities. He supposedly possessed remarkable night vision and often fell into a stupor when presented with new experiences. But others suspected his story might be a hoax. The boy had learned language and writing far too easily, they argued, <laughs> and his complexion was not pale enough for someone who had spent most of his life in darkness. The situation only grew more bizarre in 1833 when Hauser died from a mysterious, possibly self-inflicted stab wound. Oh. Dozens of wild theories have since been proposed about his origins, including that he was actually a royal who was confined as part of a conspiracy to prevent him taking the throne, whether he was actually a real-life wild child uh, or merely a skilled con man at the age of 13. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just a bit suspect. It sounds to me like it was a hoax, and then maybe he got found out and stabbed himself. Or he just it to all them years waiting, and they just never sent him to military school. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to live for! <laughs> yeah, maybe it was that. Or maybe just someone stabbed him because he was a dick. It's <laughs> a possibility. Maybe. But he had excellent night vision, so they couldn't have done it in the dark. They like, just must have done it in the daytime then, mustn't they? <laughs> I have an excellent night vision, but I'm blind as a bat in the fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, fellow soldier. How are you? Ah. He should develop that sonar, that guy, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, fuck's sake, that's not true. I'm sorry, that can't be true. 
Oh. All right, um, Dina Sanica. Often known as the Wolf Boy, Dina Sanica was first discovered in 1865 after a band of hunters spied what they initially thought was a wild animal sleeping in the mouth of a cave in Berlanzar District, India. When the men finally smoked the creature out of its hiding place... <laughs> fucking hell. They were astonished to find he was actually a boy of six, around six years old. He uh, appeared to have been living in the wilderness for most of his life and had allegedly survived by scampering on all fours with a pack of wolves. Um, the hunters... That's amazing, that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. If that's true, I mean, you just wonder why the wolves didn't eat him. Well, you know, he's only a kid. I mean, sometimes they kind of take him in, don't they? Like a pack instinct to protect the young. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was nursing pups at the time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe he just eventually worked his way in with them. <laughs> <laughs> just hung around yeah. and snarled back and stuff. Cop they copied their behaviour. Brought them food. Brought them oh. some food, maybe. Maybe he's he tried. Even know to hunt at that. No. Maybe he tried to bring suckle... him a stag, is he? <laughs> Maybe he tried to suckle a wolf cub at his teeth. Uh, you know. I'm thinking possibly a nursing mother. Yeah, maybe. Thought it was one of his own her own cubs. Yeah. You what, see that fucking you... blind? No, you see that, don't you? It's called imprinting. Yeah. I've seen like videos of like a cat with like ducklings because they think it's her brood. Uh, doesn't seem like a good idea to leave a cat alone with ducklings. Well, yeah, but they think it's she thinks it's her kids, and they and they think it's her, her mom. Yeah. It's just it's called imprinting. It's like the first face they see, they imprint on them. And if the if the cat already had kittens or just had kittens, like she's still got that maternal instinct, instinct yeah. and she accepts it. Yeah, and then they get a little bit older, and she <laughs> fucking kills them all. <laughs> no. Well, they, they love them, don't they? Yeah. Sorry, I've used to believe... cats and dogs and, and other animals can live together. They can actually live. I refuse to believe a cat is not going to kill a bunch of ducks if he gets the chance. Oh, I bet, like, farm, farm cats then that just walk past the ducks, yeah. the chickens and all that lot, but only go after sort of your rats and your mice that are eating the grain. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm. Oh, all right, well, that kind of does shoot my theory yeah, down. How many, there's probably millions of homes in this country with cats and dogs and birds all together. Do you know what I mean? They well, do, you just, don't they? You just find where, where you are in the grand scheme of things, don't you? Yeah, in, place in the, the house or in the, you know, mm -hmm. on the farm, whatever. Yeah, true. And so they took him to a, uh, the Skinandra Mission Orphanage in Agra, where he was taken in and named Dina Sanaka. Missionaries spent the next several years trying to rehabilitate the wolf boy, but years in the wild had taken their toll. He never learned to talk before his death in 1895, and he preferred to gnaw on bones and dine on raw animal meat rather than cooked food. Some have suggested that this story may have inspired the feral boy character Mowgli in Kipling's Jungle Book. Apparently so, yeah. Mm. Wolf boy. It's <laughs> a pretty cool nickname though, isn't it? Yeah. I like it, man. Okay then, so let's go on to a few more stories, because these are some more, more, some more recent ones. Marina Chapman. In 1954, at five years of age, Marina was kidnapped from a village in Colombia and left by her kidnappers in the jungle. Oh, she, eventually, she allegedly ended up befriending and living with a family of capuchin monkeys and becoming one of them. Ah! <laughs> she claims that she ate berries and roots, slept in holes in trees, played and groomed with them and even walked on all fours like they did. They cared for her like their own and even tended to her when she got a bad case of food poisoning. She lived with the monkeys for five years, she estimates, and had completely lost her language when she was discovered by hunters. Wow. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. After a bit of misfortune and mistreatment, Marina ended up working as a nanny in the UK. What the fuck? She eventually married and had children, and her life experiences are accounted in her book, The Girl With No Name, which she wrote with her daughter. Oh, wow, that's cool. So she's made something of herself. Yep. Misfortune and mistreatment. Hmm. But what I would say is that monkeys, would you argue that monkeys are, like, more likely to take a human infant on because of our close genetic similarity? Yeah. Possibly, yeah. 
and they'll be able to like notice that she's vulnerable. Yeah, but still, you've got there's got to be an element of luck in that because I mean, monkeys are notorious for killing. Mm -hmm. the, 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 each other, human infants. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to be really looking at monkeys just not in a fucking horny rage and just rips your face off. Mm. Well, I think this is the ultimate good um, immigration story, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> a successful author yeah. used to live with monkeys. You can't get... Keep your freedom of movement, damn right. That, can you? That's, That's awesome. Fair play. Yeah. Oksana Malaya. Oksana was born in November 1983 and found in 1991 in the Ukraine living with dogs in a kennel. Oksana's parents were negligent, alcoholic and unable to care for her. One night when she was three years old they just left her out in the cold. She saved her own life by crawling to the farm kennel and keeping warm by curling up with the wild stray dogs that occupied the streets. She found her home with the dogs and learned their behaviours and mannerisms she ran on all fours, barked and bared her teeth, panted, sniffed at her food for she ate it and acquired acute dog-like senses of hearing, smell and sight. Super what? Dog girl? Is she a superhero? Again, I question the dog-like senses, but they would have been probably heightened and yeah. I think it would be more the mannerisms are sort of sniffing yeah. and... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Still a tragic story. <laughs> Oh yeah. Though she was, when she was discovered, she only knew the words yes and no. Through intensive therapy, she was able to learn the basic social and verbal skills of a five-year-old. Uh, now, and as a, an adult, she lives in Odessa and works with farm animals. Oh, that's nice. It's a happy ending. Yeah. I bet she's really good with the dogs. I bet. Hmm. Kamala and Amala. In October 1920, two girls, Kamala aged 8 and Amala aged 18 months, were found in a wolves' den near Godamari, west of Calcutta, India, by the minister of a nearby mission unit. When they were captured, the girls didn't look human, were physically deformed and had the characteristics of wolves. Fuck. The tendons and joints in their arms and legs were shortened, they had misshapen jaws, elongated canines, walked on all fours and even had eyes that shone in the dark. Like dog's eyes. Living with humans proved hard for these girls. They often slept curled up together, growled, ate nothing but raw meat, and howled. Like other feral kids, they developed acute senses of hearing, sight, and smell. Mm. That's weird. Yeah. Like they looked a bit like wolfish. Yeah, that's. I question that. No photographs of them, is it? No, no, I guess not. I um, question. I think that's just obviously been embellished over the years, perhaps. Yeah. I like to think they've started to look like wolves. It's impossible. I told you before. You can't do it. You can't just... It's a DNA adapting to its surroundings. <laughs> yeah, it does to an extent, but not like that. And you just start sprouting hair and looking like, yeah. you know, like some wolf person. What about developing the teeth? If you're if you starting to rip more, like rip the meat, you need your canines. Well, and then why on, you know, long distance swimmers? Developing gills. To <laughs> Who's to say they're not? You know what I mean? Who's to say they're not? It, it's natural selection. It takes generations over generations, isn't it? Oh, do you know swimmers haven't developed gills? Have you ever seen one? No, have you? No, I don't go no, to swimming events. <laughs> well, all right. Hmm. Sadly, Amala died a year after she was discovered, but Kamala survived until 17 years of age. By which point she'd learned to walk upright and spoke around 50 words and had started eating a human diet. It's better than nothing. No. Oh, well, it's still a bit of a shit life, isn't it? Dying at 17. Well, yeah. But how long will they have lasted with the wolves? Who knows? Well. How old do wolves get? I'd imagine 10, 12, something like that. Mm. A bit older, maybe. Mm. John Sisbunya. Right, so John's story is a harrowing tale. In 1988, at age three, he ran away from home when he witnessed his father murdering his mother. He fled to the jungle and found a home living with monkeys. At six years of age, he was found by a Ugandan villager and brought back to his village. In the three years of living among the monkeys, he developed characteristics and traits of his monkey friends. His knees were white from walking on them, his nails long and round, he ate roots, nuts and sweet potatoes, and he'd also developed a severe case of intestinal worms. Uh. Oh. 
He fondly recalls the monkeys befriended him within two weeks in the jungle and taught him how to travel with them, how to search for food and how to climb trees. He eventually learned how to speak and proved to have a magnificent singing voice and he currently tours in the UK with a 20-member Pearl of Africa Children's Choir. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, talk about hitting the fucking jackpot. Yeah. You sell your life story and then go, oh, you know, I've learned to speak and I can sing! <laughs> so the great immigrant story. <laughs> The UK? You can't argue so far, there can we you? Go. I mean, obviously, you're not going to let in the girl with a 50 word vocabulary and just like, walk upright. Well, no, but the ones that we did, they've done well, haven't they? Yeah. Just goes to show. Shamit Shamdo. In 1972, a four year old boy was discovered in a forest in India. He was playing with wolf cubs and even displayed the same wolf like behaviours and characteristics as Kamala and Amala we mentioned earlier. He had long hooked fingernails. Calluses on his hands and knees, sharpened teeth, and suffered from a craving for blood. Fuck. He loved chicken hunting <laughs> as much as he loved the darkness. He also had close friendships with dogs and jackals. He was taken to the village of Nampur and lived among the villagers who named him Shandio. He never learned to speak, but was able to sign to learn sign language. Um, he slowly weaned off raw meat and transitioned to a more human diet. In 1978, he entered Mother Teresa's home for the destitute and dying in Lucknow, where he was renamed Pascal and was visited by English travel writer and novelist Bruce Chatwin, and he died in 1985. Wow. I think they just left him with the wolves again. <laughs> left him with the wolves. He seems to be having fun. I see. Some, some of these have made it, haven't they? Yeah. They might have transitioned back into society and... They've done well for themselves, others have struggled, haven't they? They've just been taken in, possibly against their will at first. Yeah, imagine, yeah. Well, yeah, no, I mean, the ones that smoked out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did. Well, you know. Bastards. <laughs> All right, oh, this one's even more recent. Prava, the bird boy. In 2008, a seven-year-old boy named Prava was found and rescued by Russian healthcare workers. He was living in a tiny two-bedroom apartment with his 31-year-old mother and dozens of birds. His mother, suffering from mental illness, neglected him by treating him not as a child but like one oh, of her pet oh, birds. Fuck me. She didn't physically harm him or leave him without food. She just never spoke to him. He was confined to the room with bird cages, bird feed and, bird and droppings. His only friends and companions were the birds and as a result he never learned to speak, only chirp. And when he was misunderstood, he would wave his hands and arms like birds do with their wings. What? Eventually, uh, his mother released him to the state and he was moved to a psychological care facility where he remains today and he's still trying to be... They're still trying to rehabilitate him. Poor kid. Yeah. God, I hope he hasn't tried to fly. Because <laughs> he's going to be sorely disappointed. Yeah. Mind you, I'd imagine he's already tried. Mm. You'd try to escape, wouldn't you, and fly off? No, it's when he was in the room and birds were flying around his way thinking, oh, oh, that doesn't seem to work for me. Yeah. It doesn't actually say whether birds liked him or not either, though, does it? All the others who got on really well with their adoptive animal brothers and sisters, but it doesn't say whether birds actually liked him or not. Maybe they were his competition for food. Well, that's it. He could eat more than them. The birds are probably going hungry. Yeah. I bet they pecked him while he slept. <laughs> yeah. You know that scene in Full Metal Jacket where they get private piled, like strapped to the bed with a blanket mm. and they was like hitting him with soap in the socks? Uh -huh. yeah. I reckon the birds were doing that to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like hovering there, flapping, pulling the blanket down while others swung socks. Oh, we're laughing, stuff. this poor kid. <laughs> He's fucking... Neglected by his mom. Fucking. I know. It wouldn't just be funny if the birds hated him. No. Mm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just me. <laughs> All right. Leopard boy. That's a fucking pretty sweet name. Uh, Nineteen twelve. A two-year-old boy was stolen from his parents by a leopardess near Assam, south of the Himalayan mountains. Shit. Three years later, he was found by a hunter living with a leopard mother and her children. When he was found, he displayed all the characteristics of a leopard. He ran on all fours. It's reported he could run on all fours as fast as an adult man. His knees and palms had hard calluses. His toes were upright, almost at right angles to his instep. Oh. And his hands, toes and thumbs were covered in tough skin. Oh. So she just strolled in. <laughs> <laughs> strolled in, took the took kid. Two-year-old. Hey, hey, kid. You're not coming with me. 
Pretty cool. Wanna, come, wanna come live in the woods with me and my cubs? It's a problem in India. Leopards are wandering into people's houses, killing their pets and stuff. Well, they're stealing Taking, kids now and all. Well, I know, yeah, obviously. Stealing children as well. Can well I just, she's pretty cool. Look at her. <laughs> Can I just ask a question? Do you think this was a pedo leopard? I mean, all the others are breaking into homes and killing stuff, and this one's stealing children. No, I think she bought it back for food for a cub, and then perhaps, like you said, the maternal instinct took over and decided to keep it as one of her own. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm thinking. And pedo leopards wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what, I don't you know, know what a pedo leopard is. What's a leopard that touches, steals kids? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, human contact was problematic and anyone or anything that came near him was bitten and torn up. <laughs> he could not speak, only grunt and growl. Fortunately, he was able to assimilate back into human society and later learned to speak and walk more upright. Again, is he more happy now or was he happy with the leopards? I bet he loved living with the leopards. Roughhousing with the other leopards. Yeah. Cool. I mean, his calluses would wear off. Now he's going to get a job and a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. Before he was free, mm -hmm. I mean he was fucking running. I mean he was running fast as an adult man on all fours. Come on! I'd go for the leopard over all of them, you know, over the the wolves, the, the birds. Yeah, to be fair, having a fucking leopard, a few leopards on your side ain't eh? coming handy, will it? Fucking hell! Oh, I won't be raised by wolves. Wolves? Yeah. Go leopard over wolves. Yeah. No, yeah, man, you got a pack. Yeah. You know, leopards are like solitary, man. Right? You know, the kids might be there. You might be hanging around with the cubs, but oh uh, yeah, you got a point there. You know, mm. you got you got the pack of I tell, my pack of wolves tears your leopard apart. Good point. In a fight, I could have like mm. twenty wolf brothers. Yeah. You got a point there, really? Yeah, I've just uh, yeah. I've switched to the wolves. Oh no, it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I called wolves. <laughs> You, st the, you the stick with your giraffes. Are the monkeys? The monkeys is the best. Forgot about the monkeys. <laughs> you did want to be king of the monkeys, I do. didn't you? Who doesn't? I'll go with the leopard then. I don't want to be king of men, am I? So I'm going to aim my sights somewhere. Well, fair enough, I guess. <laughs> I'm going with wolves still. Ah, uh, monkeys. I see my monkeys. My wolves can take your monkeys on. I fucked that in the trees, <coughs> mate. You can't see us. You got to come down at some point. Don't need to. Food's up there. You've got to come down no, at some point. Don't need point. to come down at all. Well, I'm a well, I'll be with the leopards. We can go up the trees. Yeah. Well, you, I'll, I'll form an alliance with the leopards and we'll let the monkeys down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <sighs> Great food for us all. Call your cousins the gorillas. <laughs> oh, you don't get gorillas as well? Yeah. You don't get gorillas too, mate. Fate so. It's, it's not like they get on the phone. Oh, <laughs> all right, gorilla cousin. Well, no. How's your orangutan cousin doing? <laughs> Put out some kind of call, you know. What kind of call? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a monkey. <laughs> Is it you gonna call your bannermen the gorillas? Yeah. <laughs> call the, the gorillas. gorillas and, you know, light, light a fire on top of a tree. Oh, the chimps are calling for aid. Yeah. <laughs> light the beacon. Yeah. Planet of the Apes. This is the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm gonna have a load of wolves. <laughs> Me wolf king. We'll smoke you out. <laughs> <laughs> With the leopards on my side. <laughs> uh, two more for you. This is a uh, genie Wiley. Yeah, uh, this is a different kind of wild child. So I think it's a bit more true crimey. Uh, one of the most cruel instances of special isolation social. in American social isolation in American history. Jeannie Wiley, which is a pseudonym, it was a shocking story of the 1970s. A girl who spent her entire childhood locked in the bedroom, raised in extreme isolation. Jeannie was a wild child, uncivilized, able, barely able to walk or talk, still wearing diapers at 14 years old. The indications show that she was being beaten for making the noise. Yeah, it's horrific. The story is. Yeah. Uh, upon finding that Jeannie had not yet learned a language, psychologists and linguists devoted a great deal of attention on Jeannie's case, seeing an opportunity to study the development of human language and behaviour. Yeah, there's, there's a documentary on this. It was on Vimeo, but I think they've taken it down. I watched it, but it was all... It was horrific. She's basically just sort of passed between different psychologists and things and not really sort of 
looked after them more. She, they were more interested in the science rather than her as a person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And she's taken in by some people. Not didn't get abused, but kind of. But they're admitting, giving her that social interaction. That everybody knows that there's like basic standards of living mm. and, and what a person needs to thrive. Yeah, it's horrific, man. She lived basically. She, she was um, tied to the bed at night. And in the day, she was tied to like a potty, like a commode. Fucking hell. Yeah, and that was it. That was her existence for 14 years. What? Mm-hmm. Just left on her own and just given food and water. Fuck. <sighs> yeah, because they thought, the parents thought she was retarded. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, maybe out of shame or whatever, just decided that they, they didn't... Basically well, told everyone she was dead and looked locked in a basement. I guess. Yeah, it's pretty horrific. That is, man. Yeah, her bed surrounded by chicken wire. Yeah. What? Uh, the investigators concluded the mastermind behind Jean's abuse was his father, Clark Wiley. His wife, Dorothy, claimed she too was a victim of a violent psychopath. Shortly after the discovery, Clark Wiley shot and killed himself. Got the fucking coward's way out. Oh, no. uh, like other children who suffer from extreme isolation, Jeannie seemed to be disconnected from certain bodily sensations. Her temporary foster parents noticed that when she was allowed to run her own bathwater, it was ice cold, which didn't seem to make any difference to her. The scientists theorised sensitivity to temperature is very much influenced by our life experiences. Yeah, taught by your, your parents, aren't you? That's hot, that's cold. and Yeah. yeah, yeah. She hasn't been taught nothing. Jeannie never experienced the warmth of loving parents and... Uh, it's possible our sensitivity to temperature comes from nurture and not from nature. Mm. That's interesting. A bit dangerous, though. Yeah. Kids didn't know what was hot. You would know what's hot. Animals know what's hot. It's all in the nervous system. Yeah. Well, she was such a sweet little girl. You just think, oh, it's horrific what they, they did to her. There was some horrible uh, testing going on what, in hi through history, isn't it, really? Mm. Yeah. Experiments and stuff. Oh, yeah. There's an hour long documentary about Jeannie called The Secret of the Wild Child. That's it. It's very little is known about her present condition. She's living in an adult care home somewhere in California. Uh, the reports say she's happy and that she communicates with sign language. And it's best for her health and future to be just sort of left alone there. Uh, her life's just ruined. Yeah, completely. Shocking. Mm hmm. That, is that happened in the 70s in suburban America? It could be happening anywhere yeah. right now. Well, there's been a few recent cases, haven't there? Right, you know, sort of families keeping keeping the children yeah. locked up. Fritzel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then one's in Holland who the one escaped. He was like 21 and he went to defend him in the pub. Yeah, they were the ones hunkering down for the apocalypse, aren't they? Yeah. But they've been there for years. It's, yeah. It seems to be... I mean, that is terrible, though. I mean, you know, it's just... Yeah. Oof. That's shocking. Mm -hmm. Some sick bastards out there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, at least the, other, at least the others got to have uh, a play with wolves and stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, on to the last one, and my favourite wild feral child, the feral kid from Mad Max 2. Hey. As I mentioned earlier, Mad Max 2 is a documentary. This is what goes on in the Australian Outback. <laughs> If you don't live in the middle, if you don't live around the edge, right? this is what it's like. <laughs> this is exactly it. Yeah. yeah, he's the feral kid in Mad Max 2. He's a.k.a. A Carlos Tevez. A.k.a. Carlos Tevez, Premiership footballer for Man United, Man United and Man City and West Ham. Yeah, this is what happened. Little, this is little Carlos Tevez. It's beautiful. Yeah, apparently his mum and dad were pilots and they had to touch the plane down in the desert because it ran out of fuel... And dad went off, never came back. Mom went off looking for dad. Kid was left alone, taken in by the tribe. Got himself a fucking sweet ass, fucking bladed boomerang. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. And he gets to be tribe leader at the end. Well, in the future. Uh -huh. He goes on to be the tribe leader. So he makes something of himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's the one that made it. He's the one that made it, man. He ended up in charge. Actually, they, they got the actor that really played him, not Carlos Tevez. He, uh, he's been running a jeweler's shop for the last 20 odd years. Has he? Yeah. Okay. 26 years, I think. His, his acting career is trying to dry it up and he opened a jewellery shop. 
Fair enough. Uh, married kids, you know. So he did really well. Mm. Managed to move to the city. <laughs> <laughs> But he still had that fucking steel boomerang under the case of his junior <laughs> shop, though, didn't he? <laughs> I love that film, Mad Max Team. Documentary. Documentary. Oh. oh. Claire Razor Spears. Or Brownies, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, she brought Brownies, we'll let her off. Yeah, yeah, valid point. Okay, then. Who's your favourite? <laughs> Mine's Feral Kid. <laughs> Oh, he had a bit of a harsher upbringing, you know what I mean? Alright, he was with he was with humans, but he did have a gang of, you know, leather clad road warriors trying to murder him every day. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed in strange S and M gear. I mean that must have been quite frightening. I'd have rather probably lived with the wolves. The monkeys for me, I've already said. So I with the monkeys. I quite admire the the one that the woman that made her, her own clothes out of, you know, pelts and stuff. Mm. Oh yeah, all the rest of them were all naked and sort of not really arsed. Yeah, they? yeah. She covered herself up. Covered made a club. Made a club. <laughs> yeah, she was, you know, in with the pack, but also herself. Hunting alone. Yeah, she was fierce, wasn't she? Yeah. She was. I mean, okay, she killed a dog. That's tragic. But she wouldn't know that. No. It's a guard dog. He tried to attack her, so she clubbed it. What's a girl supposed to do? <laughs> a wild girl. Swine round in your fucking fur bikini. <laughs> right. That's... I still want to be king of the monkeys. Okay, will you be king of the monkeys? Fair enough. I'll, I'll go for um, the wolves, but I, I don't. I suppose I might. You know, if I can reset now and again as the feral kid, that'll be okay. <laughs> because if I got re if I got respawned after every time I got butchered by road warriors, because <laughs> that would probably happen. Yeah. All right then, weird news. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Okay, Hubble examines massive metal asteroid called Psyche that's worth way more than our global economy. This is the future, asteroid mining. All right. Yeah. Okay, so it's worth more than the entire economy. Yeah. World debt is like X amount of quadzillion. Shouldn't we just clear the Earth's debt if we get this? Well, the irony is we don't need to clear. We don't need to get this to clear the world's debt. It's all made up. Yeah, but if we if we did get yeah. this whole thing, then couldn't we just put the money towards that? And go right now. We're fiscally we're well solvent again. No one's got any debt. Yeah. Well, what have they been mining? Well, what do they want to? I'll get into it. Here's everything we need to know about Psych. <coughs> It's around 230 million miles, which is 370 million kilometres from Earth. Psyche, as it's com commonly known, is one of the most massive objects in the solar system's main asteroid belt, orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. It is around 140 miles, 226 kilometres wide, and unlike most asteroids, which are rocky or icy, Psyche appears to be metallic. In fact, it's so dense and metallic that Psyche is thought to be the leftover core of a planet that failed during its formation, a, uh, a proto-planet. Mm. That's where all the heavier elements mm -hmm. descend to the core. Yeah. Yeah, that's why Earth's core is, is mainly iron, because it's the heaviest element. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, so what's it made of? Um, we see meteorites that are mostly metal, but Psyche could be unique in it might be an asteroid that is totally made of iron and nickel, said Dr. Tracy Becker, a planetary scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, Texas. Some think the metals that comprise Psyche could maybe wor be worth about 10,000 quadrillion. The global economy was worth about 142 trillion in 2019. So we could, like, just reset the entire economy. Yeah, we could do that anyway, but, yeah. Do you think they'll do, do that, or do you think Elon this. Musk will just keep all the money? Uh, well, that's, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, he gets there, isn't it? If it's a private company, then they get all the money, don't they? Oh, no, it'll be Wayland Jutani. <laughs> <laughs> or Skynet. Yeah. Oof. Or Google Musk. <laughs> Google I'm Musk. I'm trying to think in the future, Wayne and Yutani, <laughs> Google and. Uh, what's, oh, his, what's his company? Tesla. Tesla. Google Tesla, wouldn't it? Yeah, Google. You gotta watch it for Google Tesla. Yeah. Well, but honestly, 
listeners, look out for Google Tesla, it's coming. Though. When that happens, you'll know. Mm. It's time to get in your shelters. Yeah, that's pretty much it then, really. It's the core of a planet. Yep. It's worth more than the more entire than... economy of the Earth. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. I say we go. Let's build a spaceship. Let's mm. build a rocket. They are? No, no so. us. Oh, right. Well, we've got to get that. We've got to get it quicker than them, and they're doing it in August 2022. We'll start this week. <laughs> 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 Scrap beat challenge. Yeah. Scrap challenge. <laughs> get, we'll go, we'll, get a giant asteroid. We'll rent a van. We'll go and collect a load of scrap metal. Use that to build the spaceship with drill, and and then we'll go. You're gonna need a big net to capture the asteroid. Yeah, we'll get that. It's 142 miles long. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll get all the old ladies to knit one. <laughs> yeah. We'll go all get them working on it. Mm. On the way there? No, we'll take it up with us and we'll just pop it at the back. Take the nans up with you? <laughs> no. <laughs> on the journey? Yeah. No, it'll be folded up at the back of the spaceship. Well, it's going to take three to six months to get there. Maybe longer. So, you know... We, well, this is they need to start next week. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's... So, to save time, we just send the nans up and they can make the net on the way. <laughs> I don't think nans should be going into space. <laughs> yeah. uh, then we can jettison the nans when we get there. You <laughs> can <laughs> do that to a bunch of nans. <laughs> Who could you commit nan genocide, you sick bastard? Uh, I was just thinking we got a load of nans in the, in the Dorley and Telford area to all knit like... If there's only a hundred, there's going to be a hundred and forty-nine nans, and they all minute a thousand miles each. to be fine. They're all going to be arthritic. No, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy doesn't need a sweater. We need an asteroid net. Get to it, Vera. Or a giant magnet. <laughs> That's going to cost us more money. <laughs> the nans are expendable. <laughs> Fuck. What are all your plans? Why do you pervert all of my plans to involve some kind of genocide? Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah. It's great and everything, that. It's wonderful. Let's get up there and get it. And But I'm not going to see any of that money, am I? I don't know. Maybe. No, I'm probably not. Yeah, not, you will. None of that is going to trickle down to me. Well, no, it won't. It's all going to stay up there with Bezos and Google and Musk, isn't it? It's... No... It's made me sad now. <laughs> okay, moving on then. Parents name baby after internet provider in exchange for 18 years free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? A new mum and dad have incorporated Twiffler, or Twiffier, is that? I think it's Twiffier. Into their baby daughter's name to bag themselves free internet until she's an adult. But now say they feel a little ashamed by their decision. They're not, are they? <laughs> They're not ashamed, are they? <laughs> oh, just making their kids' life a fucking misery for 18 years just to save a few quid. Swiss internet provider Twiffy is currently advertising the offer on its website, stating that parents who name their little ones Twiffius or Twiffier will surf the web free of charge until their offspring becomes an adult. It's great marketing ploy, isn't it? Yeah. It is. All these kids growing up, the name of your fucking brand. Yeah. Yeah, but what if there's like there's three or four of you in a it? class? It's gonna get fucking confusing. <laughs> yeah. Twiffy, 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 Twiffy. I'm, uh, I'm here to fix the Twiffy. <laughs> it could be a middle name. <laughs> Think they would let you with that? Yeah, they did. That's what they did. Oh, well, I'll throw it in as a middle yeah. name. You know, along with fucking Luke Skywalker and Megatron. <laughs> yeah, the girl's second middle name. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're going to put all the money they spent on Wi-Fi into a savings account for their daughter. Bless. Oh, you can tell they're from fucking Sweden. They're not from Switzerland. All oh, right, whatever. They're weird, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great marketing ploy, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking, looking to knock it. But still, Obviously, uh, as long as you've got a decent brand name. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to be called, like, just Sky. Sky. Sky Broadband. 
<laughs> Sky's not a bad name, though. No, Sky's nice. No, but you're going to be called Sky Broadband. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Them's the rules, I don't make them. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to call your kid Rupert Murdoch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's my son. <laughs> my son, Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch Carter. <laughs> Terry's roofing contractor. <laughs> <laughs> parents like proper so scummy fuckers and they called their kid like Terry's House of Lube <laughs> <laughs> or Anal Plug or something like that <laughs> here's my son Anal Plug <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all because he wanted free anal plugs for life you dirty bastard <laughs> yeah <laughs> what up <laughs> oh, he's with us on cock ring <laughs> Sponsored by the sex shop, aren't you? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. obviously the better looking as a kid you were, the more, the more lucrative ones you get, so yeah. you're really ugly kids, so you get the shit stuff. Shut up, Black Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up, Neto. <laughs> you know, it's... Nah. Oh well, there's my theory then. I bet this is going to catch on though. I bet. Well, what if you try and get so like, if you go and get a company's name tattooed on your forehead? <laughs> um, who's your internet provider, Mike? Plusnet. Okay, you get Plusnet tattooed on your forehead, <laughs> and then take a picture of it, yeah. send it to Plusnet, see if they give you free internet. No nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that. Nonsense, we're not having that. <laughs> you know, I'll record you having it done at the tattooists. <laughs> you can be a fortune advertising. Mm-hmm. Well, it may come to that yet, mate. <laughs> it's certainly an option I won't consider. <laughs> what? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the go ahead for get the money first I get the tattoo. <laughs> that needs to be spontaneous. <laughs> It's a good idea for you. I think you can make, some, make a few quid. Maybe you can have other stuff done on your face. I don't know, like Bisto on one cheek. Uh, <laughs> Betty Cockers on the other. Betty Crockers. Betty Crockers on the other. Who's Betty Cocker? Cocker. <laughs> I was just trying to incorporate some advertising, some companies in that cock in it. I couldn't think of it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You turn your entire body. Like, yeah. You make it turn your entire body as an advertising board. Mm-hmm. Hey, it may come to that, yeah. Try the chippy down the road to the <laughs> eat three fish and chips a week, twice a week. If Man's Lee Fish Bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Okay. Next. Okay. Um, a jealous woman lured X to car park before trying to chop off his testicles <gasps> during sex. What is it with the <laughs> abundance of testicle removal in this week's weird news? Is it something about Halloween? Must be. Woman has been arrested for allegedly trying to cut off her ex-boyfriend's testicles in a in apparent jealous rage. The man was stabbed several times in the incident, receiving wounds to his head and his cheek, and as well as his groin. Oh bloody hell! She's not very good if she's fucking getting wounds to his head and cheek as well as his groin. I mean, fucking hell! Be more precision, like love. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Look, if she's gonna try and cut off me nuts, okay. I'll accept that, but there's no reason. <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't want to. I don't want to lose my nuts, but I accept her reasoning. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, no. she's trying to cut what my the hell face, done to her? That's what I want to know. If she's trying to cut my face, I'm like, hey, hey, look, you just want the balls. I'm not going to let you do that, but don't try and cut my fucking face off. She's going psycho, this woman. What well, you got to reason with her? So, ben, have you ever tried reasoning with a psychotic woman? <laughs> well, not for at least a couple of years. There you go, it's not easy. He was rushed to hospital in uh, in Mallorca, in Spain, for urgent treatment. The police alleged that he was attacked by the woman and claimed to be in an informal relationship with him. Of course, she's a Latina as well. Yeah, she's gone sick. Gone loco. She accused him of inviting him to go and to well, parking, parking area. area in town of Andalusia. Something like that. Where they uh, started to have sex. 
And then the police alleged that he felt a, sh a, a sharp pain in his private parts and then discovered that the woman was trying to cut off his spawn. <laughs> <laughs> tries to defend himself but um he was stabbed twice pierced in the cheek and a head wound there you and go. He managed to run off and ask for help yeah fuck me she's old in his fucking nutsack i'd imagine colombian woman <laughs> fiery wow. you want to piss one of them off no you don't i say you lost your balls isn't it <laughs> 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 Been released on bail? Never. <laughs> wow. Uh, fuck me. Anyway, you're taken to hospital, obviously, because it's the, uh, you know, infection of the balls, and you don't want gangrenous balls. No. But I will take hugely swollen balls in exchange for med medicinal cannabis. <laughs> that episode of South Park. I haven't seen that one. Oh. Randy keeps putting his balls in the microwave and they eventually sort of keep, they swell and he's, he's bouncing around on them like space hoppers. <laughs> and he starts getting free medicinal weed. <laughs> So then all the men in South Park start doing it. I'll do anything oh, for free weed. Yeah. And they're all bouncing around the street, <laughs> yeah. aren't they? He's like got a motorcycle gang with guys bouncing on swollen balls. Mm. Uh, good times. <laughs> Alright, I'd say that's the end of the show. Thanks for listening. I've been Ben. Check out Devil's Advocate, my sideshow. Oh, my and Sean's sideshow. Give us a rating on Facebook. Give us a rating on Facebook would be great, please, if you like what you hear. Uh, if we amuse you. Yeah, don't drink the flavour aid, don't join a call. I've been Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out, may the force be with you. And I've been Claire, keep an open mind, but not so open that it's been all my ears. <laughs>